Hello everyone, this is second lecture of week 2 of the course process equipment design and here we are going to discuss double pipe heat exchanger. Now if you remember we have started this topic in last lecture that is lecture 6th or first uh, lecture of week 2. In that lecture we have discussed design steps about double pipe heat exchanger. Okay. And in this lecture, we are going to illustrate the design of double pipe heat exchanger through an example. Okay. So, let us uh, start with the example. Now, before starting that example, here I am having one table where property data of organic liquids are shown. Okay. Now, if you remember the last class or now, if you remember the last lecture, there we have discussed properties of different liquids or different fluids, right. So, in that, so in that property, we have not discussed the density data, right. I have told you that you can find that data in Perry's handbook or uh, uh, similar handbooks also. So, in this slide, I am showing the density data along with other data of the fluids. For example, if you see here we have this uh, uh, liquid and corresponding to each liquid we have this density data. So, you can collect the density data from this table and other data are also here. So, either you can collect the data from the graph which we have discussed in the last lecture or you can directly collect that data from this table if that fluid is falling in this table. right? So, that is about the density data information. And uh, from now, we will start the example to design a double pipe heat exchanger. So, here I am considering example 1, where around 10,000 pound per hour of benzene will be heated up from 60 to 120 degree Fahrenheit by heat exchange with an aniline stream which is cooled from 150 to 100 degree Fahrenheit, right. So, number of 16 fit hair pins consists of 2 inch by 1.25 inch schedule 40 stainless steel pipe. So, I think you remember that what is the schedule number if I am saying that 2 inch by 1.25 what is the meaning of that 2 inch represents the outer diameter of the ex exchanger and 1.25 inch represents the inner diameter of the exchanger right. What I can say this is basically the nominal diameter of the equipment or what I can say this is basically the nominal diameter of the pipe like 2 inch is the nominal diameter of outer pipe 1.25 inch is the out is the norm is the nominal diameter of inner pipe right and here I am having k value also which represents the thermal conductivity of the material as you can say we have a stainless steel pipe fine. So, here we have a benzene as well as aniline, one among that will flow in uh, inner pipe and another will flow in annular pipe. So, we can see the combination of uh, uh, allocation of fluid to inner pipe or outer pipe. Right. Now, if we further see, now if we further see, we can have maximum pressure drop of 20 psi which is for both streams. right? So, we will calculate the pressure drop of each side and that should come lesser than 20 psi. Fine. A specific gravity of benzene 0.879 and for aniline it is 1.022. So, you can get the density data from this problem only. And uh, next we have to determine the number and configuration of hair pins that are required. Okay. So, here we are going to design the double pipe heat exchanger where we will fix the number of hair pins and the configuration. Configuration means whether it should be operated in series or parallel right? that we have already discussed in the last lecture. So, let us start the solution of this problem. So, here we have to start with an assumption that the hair pins are connected in series on both sides like it 
I am considering the simplest configuration. Okay. So, if you remember what we have to solve in this problem is we have to find the hairpins number as well as the configuration. So, first I am considering series configuration where both fluids are entering in series in double pipe heat exchanger. Okay. And for uh, calculation purpose we can consider that benzene is flowing in inner pipe and aniline is flowing in outer pipe fine and either fluid could be replaced in inner pipe. So, here we are considering first that benzene is flowing in inner pipe if all design conditions will be satisfied we will consider this uh, configuration or consider this flow otherwise we relocate the liquid to inner side or annular side fine and here we are considering that counter current movement between two fluids is occurring because we are considering series configuration. So, let us start with the uh, solution of that with this assumption. So, what we have to compute first? We have to first collect the properties and as you know that we have already discussed in the last lecture that property we usually collect at average temperature. Fine. So, here fortunately for both fluids you know the terminal temperatures inlet and outlet temperature of both fluids are known to you. So, you can simply calculate the average temperature and you can see the properties, properties like viscosity, thermal conductivity and uh, specific heat of two fluids and uh, all these information are available in the graph which we have discussed in the last class. I hope you understand how to collect the data from that graph. right? So, considering those figures, considering, so considering those figures we can consider the viscosity that is in centipoise, se specific heat and thermal conductivity of benzene as well as for aniline. Along with that you already know the density data that is specific uh, that is specific gravity of the fluids are known to you. Right. So, considering these properties we will first calculate the heat duty of the exchanger fine. So, let us uh, determine the heat duty and further we will calculate the aniline flow rate because here 10,000 pound per hour flow rate is given corresponding to benzene only. So, first of all we will make the heat duty and then balance the heat with the heat of another fluid to find out the flow rate of another fluid right because temperatures of both fluids are known to you fine. So, to compute this we need the specific heat as a property which we have already collected. So, here I am having heat duty as Q and that will be nothing but m c p delta t for benzene b is representing for benzene. So, here you can simply make the balance fine. So, 2 lakhs 52,000 BTU per hour is the heat duty which should be balanced with the m c p d t of aniline right as a represents the aniline. So, when I am making the balance I can find that 96 9 2 pound per hour uh, flow rate is uh, available for aniline. So, if you compare the flow rates of two fluids it is almost equal right. So, once I am having the heat duty and uh, flow rate of aniline we will next calculate log mean temperature log mean temperature difference and you understand that and you understand here that I am considering counter current flow. So, you can simply calculate LMTD because that is a well known expression and you all uh, know this expression being a chemical engineer. So, here I am having this LMTD which I am which I have found as 34.76 Fahrenheit and then we will further calculate heat transfer coefficient at inner pipe or at annular site. Assuming assuming psi i as 1 it means at present I am it means psi represents what psi represents the viscosity correction factor fine. So, that 
I am considering 1 because uh, right now I am not considering viscosity correction factor that I will calculate further and then we will multiply that with the HI or HO whatever we will obtain fine. Now here we should also consider the diameter because what you know, you know the nominal diameter of outer pipe that is 2 inches and nominal diameter of inner pipe that is 1.25 inches right. So, we have to find out d i and d o fine. Now, if I am considering h i what I have to focus on? I have to focus on d i value. So, that I can collect from so that I can collect from table B 2 and what is that table B 2? If you remember the last lecture we have discussed the pipe information fine and that is corresponding to the nominal diameter, outer diameter and schedule number if you remember fine. So, here I am having for inner pipe nominal diameter as 1.25 schedule number 40 fine. So, let us discuss table B 2. Now, if you focus on table B 2, what is given over here? This is a part of uh, this is a part of table B 2. Detail of this table we have already discussed in the last lecture. So, if you see, so here I am having 1.25 as a nominal diameter if you remember the first column. Second column corresponds to the outer diameter. So, that is 1.66. Now, what we have to find over here? We have to find out the inner diameter of inner pipe fine and that should corresponds to 40 schedule number fine. So, 40 schedule number if you see it is available over here and if you consider this uh, uh, fifth column okay, that corresponds to inner dia fine and this is what this is basically the thickness of pipe corresponds to 40 s corresponds to 40 schedule number. So, here d i should be 1.38 fine. So, you see here I am already having 1.38 as uh, inner dia and that is in inches. So, we can convert that into fit and then we can calculate Reynolds number fine. So, that is corresponding to the benzene. So, 10,000 pound per hour flow rate of benzene is given. Now, here we have this pi d i mu. So, d i is already you have calculated. So, d i you have already calculated and 0.55 is the viscosity of benzene fine if you if you refer the property table and 2.419 this is basically the conversion ok because that viscosity is available in centi poise. So, considering these values we can obtain Reynolds number as 83217 and it is falling under turbulent flow zone. Now, for turbulent flow zone when I am having Reynolds number greater than 10 power 4, we can simply use Cedar Tate equation and this equation you can refer and if I elaborate Nussel's number that would be H i d i by k. So, simply you can calculate considering this equation the heat transfer coefficient value and that comes as 290 BTU per hour fit square degree Fahrenheit ok. Prandtl number you can calculate because you already know the properties. Now, here what uh, we have considered? We have considered the heat transfer coefficient value without viscosity correction factor fine because I am not focusing on psi value right now that I have assumed as 1. So, here I am having so here I am having the value of H i Next is now further we have to find out heat transfer coefficient in annular side right where aniline is moving fine. So, to calculate that H O we are further assuming phi not equal to 1 because I am not considering viscosity correction factor and further we have to find out D 2 and D 1 fine. So, how I can find these values? these should be corresponding to 2 inches and 1.25 inches nominal diameters if you remember fine because in annular side we have to consider equivalent diameter not d i or d naught. So, for that purpose we have to cal calculate. 
So, for that purpose we have to calculate the d i and d naught. Now, what is d i over here? d i if I am considering double pipe heat exchanger d i is what? d i is the outer diameter of inner pipe right and d naught or d o will be what? That will be the inner diameter of outer pipe. I hope you are understanding. So, let us collect that uh, values from the table B 2. So, again I am considering this table B 2 the part of table B 2. So, if you see we have uh, 1.25 okay, and what I have told you that d i corresponds to the outer diameter of inner pipe. So, inner pipe nominal diameter is 1.25 and this is the outer diameter of 1.25 nominal diameter pipe right and for 2 inches we have to consider the inner diameter corresponds to 40 schedule number. So, if you see value should come as 2.067 I hope you can understand that. So, corresponding to this we can have d i and d 2 value and uh, we have just seen how these values have been obtained. Now, once I am having d 2 and uh, d i. Now, once I am having d 2 and d 1 which I have also represented as d naught and d i corresponding to annular side not d i of inner pipe right which we have discussed in the last slide. So, here we have d 2 and d 1 value and considering and considering this we can calculate equivalent diameter as 0 0.0339 fit fine and next we can find out the flow area flow area pi by 4 d 2 square minus d 1 square that is simple calculation. So, you can find this value and uh, further we can find out the Reynolds number in annular side right. So, this uh, equivalent diameter we have. So, this equivalent diameter we just have calculated and considering mass flow rate of aniline and viscosity of aniline with the convergent factor we can find out Reynolds number as A212. So, if you see this uh, range of Reynolds number the flow is transition flow ok. So, that should be. So, if I am having the transition flow we have to use another equation which is shown over here ok. So, you can consider this equation ok. This is basically the Hausen equation if you remember the last lecture and uh, here I can find out H naught corresponding to thermal conductivity of aniline and equivalent diameter. So, this is the whole expression and when you put the values over here thermal conductivity and Reynolds number Prandtl number value fine. So, corresponding to all these value you can find out H O value as 283 BTU per hour fit square degree Fahrenheit. So, in this way you can calculate H i and H naught and now we will focus on the psi values where I have to focus on viscosity correction factors right. Now, how to calculate viscosity correction factor? Viscosity correction factor if you remember that is basically mu by mu w and mu w is what? Mu w is basically the viscosity of the fluid at wall temperature ok and mu is the viscosity of the fluid at average temperature which we already having in a property table fine. So, let us first consider the wall temperature how to calculate that. So, this is the expression for wall temperature and uh, T average and uh, this capital T average these values of temperature uh, of both fluids are known to us. So, we can simply calculate that H i and H naught we have already calculated. So, considering all these values we can find out wall temperature as 108.9 degree Fahrenheit ok. Now, corresponding to the figures, figures of what? Figures of viscosity data fine we can find out benzene viscosity and aniline viscosity at 108.9 degree Fahrenheit and it comes out as mu b as 0.47 centipoise uh, and here p should be capital sorry for that 
P should be capital fine. So, here mu B is 0 0.47 centipoise and mu A is 2.4 centipoise. Okay. Considering these values of uh, viscosity at wall temperature and viscosity at average temperature of both fluids, we can find out viscosity correction factors like this, where psi i is equal to 1.0222 and psi naught is equal to 0 0.9748. Fine. So, considering these value, we can calculate h i and h naught as 296 BTU are fit square degree Fahrenheit and 276 BTU are fit square degree Fahrenheit respectively. So, in this way you can find out H i and H naught with viscosity correction factor. Now, once you are having this H i and H naught what we have to calculate first obviously, the overall heat transfer coefficient fine. So, if you remember the overall heat transfer coefficient expressions, it includes 5 terms in which 2 terms corresponding to dirt factor of both fluids fine. So, in this case both fluids like benzene and aniline these fluids fall in organic liquid range fine. So, in both fluids we can consider same dirt factor. Okay, because both are falling in same category. So, for that purpose we have considered dirt factor as 0 0.001 r feet square degree Fahrenheit per BTU. Okay. So, this is uh, for both fluids considering this we can ca we can calculate considering this we can calculate overall heat transfer coefficient using this expression where r d i and r d naught are dirt factor value and in some expressions we can use dirt coefficient that would be HOD or HID if you remember the basic design parameters lecture right. So, considering D i D naught H i H naught and thermal conductivity of the material that is already given in the problem. So, considering all these value we can find out overall heat transfer coefficient at dirt condition as 89 BTU per hour feet square degree Fahrenheit. So, here you can calculate overall heat transfer coefficient and next what we have to find out we already have calculated we already have calculated the heat duty overall heat transfer coefficient and LMTD is already with me. So, what we have to calculate next is the heat transfer area fine. So, this is very common equation for heat transfer area that is the duty should be equal to u a delta t mean and that should be l m. Uh, here it is not i n it should be l n that is the log mean temperature difference fine. So, considering all these value we can find out area as 81.5 feet square and next what we have to find out we have to find out the overall length of the exchanger okay? because we have to calculate the hair pins and one hair pins one side of that is 16 feet fine. So, we will first calculate the overall length and then we will find the hair pins number by dividing that value with the length of one hair pin. Okay? So, let us focus on the calculation of total length of the exchanger and to calculate that we need the external surface area per foot of inner pipe that is 1.25 inch schedule 40 pipe okay. and that value comes as 0.435. So, how I can obtain that value? That value I can extract from this table which is a part of table B2. Now, here I am having one now, here I am having 1.25 nominal diameter pipe and uh, if you see here we have the if you uh, see the table B2 properly at the top we have different uh, column names okay? and this column corresponds to the surface area per unit length. Okay? So, correspond to 40 S correspond to 40 schedule number we can find out value as 4.435. Okay. So, 435 feet square per unit length 
fine. So, total heat transfer area I already know and I will consider this 0.435 as a perimeter. So, you can consider 187.4 fit is the total length of double pipe heat exchanger. Okay. And further if I am considering 16 fit hairpin, so total length of the pipe is 32 fit. Right. Now, if you remember the last lecture, in that lecture I have told you that uh, hairpin length is 16 fit, so that is the total length, but that is given as but that is given as half of the length, right. So, if I am saying 8 fit hairpin or 16 fit hairpin, it means it is only the half length of the total pipe, fine. So, if I am having 16 fit, 32 fit is the total length and 187.4 fit length we have already seen as a total length of exchanger. So, we can simply find out 6 hairpins as total number of hairpins right in this example. Now, further we will focus on pressure drop calculations. So, first of all we should focus on pressure drop of inner pipe where benzene stream is available. Okay. So, for that purpose we can calculate the frictional factor first. So, that expression we have already discussed in the last lecture. So, corresponding to the Reynolds number you can choose the F factor. So, in this case Reynolds number is 83217 and uh, other parameters are not required. So, we can simply calculate dirt, we can simply calculate friction factor over here. We can simply calculate friction factor over here and uh, the flow area we can find out and uh, division of mass flow rate divided by flow area will give the capital G value that mass flow rate per unit area, right. So, value comes as this value. Now, the pressure drop in straight section of the pipe is calculated using following equation. Now, if you remember the pressure drop discussion, now if you remember the pressure drop calculation which we have discussed in the last lecture in double pipe heat exchanger we have two section first is the straight pipe where flow is occurring in a straight pipe and second is the band okay return band so we can consider pressure drop in two sections simultaneously and then that and then we add those pressure drops to find out total pressure drop in double pipe heat exchanger in inner side or in annular side right so this is the expression to calculate pressure drop in inner pipe and uh, considering all these value where this S corresponds to the specific heat of the, where this S corresponds to the specific gravity of the benzene fine. So, that value you already uh, can see from the ex problem and uh, putting all these value we can consider pressure drop as 6.1 psi that is in a straight pipe only. Now, pressure drop in a return pipe or in return band we can consider this expression because it will depend on the number of hairpins that we have computed as 6. You know all other parameters and you can simply find out pressure drop in return pipe as 1.85 psi. Okay. And, uh, addition of this two will give the total pressure drop in inner pipe, right. So, here I am having total pressure drop as 8 psi. So, if you recall the limit of pressure drop that is 20 psi should be the maximum limit, okay. But here I am getting, but here I am getting 8. So, here I am working in safer side, right. So, now calculate the pressure drop of aniline which is flowing in annular side, fine. So, here we have the expression corresponding to the Reynolds number. So, you can find that uh, value of F like this okay. and further we can calculate the flow area. Okay. So, if you recall the last slide, so if you recall the last slide there we can obtain the flow area and that flow area you can simply find out through table B2 fine. So, all these values are given. Okay. So, here I am having the flow area and corresponding to this G value you can obtain like this and further we can find out the pressure drop in a straight pipe and pressure drop 
in uh, return pipe. So, we will first calculate the pressure drop in uh, straight pipe. So, you have all values including the specific gravity of aniline and uh, including the annular and including the equivalent diameter right. So, pressure drop in a straight pipe you can find out as 47.5 psi fine. So, here you should not calculate the pressure drop in band pressure drop in return band because this pressure drop is already exceeding then the permissible limit which is 20 psi fine. So, here my design becomes infeasible we have to design in such a way so that both so that both pressure drop should lie within 20 psi ok. So, here we have to start the second trial ok, but what we can summarize from this first trial is the pressure drop and annular side is too large that we have already seen and Reynolds number in annulus is less than 10,000. So, so, so flow in annular side or flow in annulus is in transition zone which we should not use ok. So, what we can do to overcome this that we have two possibilities first is we can switch the fluids ok and second is we can connect the annuli in parallel fine because what we have to do over here we are not uh, focusing on inner size we are not focusing on inner side because there already we are in a safer side right. But in annular side or annulus or annuli we can consider lesser pressure drop and therefore, we will divide the flow in annular side only not in inner pipe ok. And these two possibility I have already discussed in lecture 1 also because uh, what we should do when the infeasibility occur. So, these two options we have already focused there also ok. So, effect of these two possibility changes on Reynolds number and pressure drop can be estimated as first of all if I am switching the fluid ok. So, what will happen? Since the flow rates of two streams are approximately the same ok because both fluids are more or less uh, uh, 10,000 one is 10,000 and second is 96 uh, 197 something like that. So, both of the fluids are in same flow ok. So, Reynolds number will definitely be the function of viscosity over here ok and uh, that should be inversely proportional to fine. So, considering this we can simply switch the fluid that uh, aniline is flowing in uh, inner pipe and benzene is flowing in outer pipe. So, if I am considering that uh, reverse of Reynolds number or switching of Reynolds number we can find these Reynolds number in inner pipe and annular side it means both are falling in turbulent zone fine. So, so once I am having the Reynolds number of two side we can calculate the pressure drop of two side. So, pressure drop uh, changes we can further find out based on uh, specific gravity value ok. So, Reynolds number so pressure drop of annular side for straight pipe 6.1 we have obtained and this is the switching of uh, Reynolds number. So, here we can find out uh, final Reynolds number as 7 psi in uh, inner pipe and 41 psi in annulus side ok. So, here again it is more than 20 psi. So, obviously, switching the fluid does not solve my problem as it is not reducing annulus side pressure drop fine. So, we have to connect so, we have to go for the second option and that is to connect the annuli in two parallel banks ok. So, in this case what will happen because whatever would be the Reynolds number it is divided in two section because we are considering the parallel flow right. So, here I am having the Reynolds number like this which we have divided in which we have divided by 2. So, 41 
100 Reynolds number is in annular side and uh, you see further and you see the revised pressure drop in annular side we can obtain as 7 psi. So, apparently this modification will take care of the pressure drop, but we will push the Reynolds number further into the transition region because now the Reynolds number is less than 10,000 fine. So, what we can consider switching the fluid and changing the pattern, changing the pattern means changing the configuration is not solving my problem. Okay. Though it is falling under, though it is falling under required pressure drop, but it is putting the liquid to the transition zone which we should avoid. So, what we can consider? We can consider the combination of two options together. So, considering this we can make a third alternative where switching as well as connect the annuli with connect the annuli in two parallel bank both we should consider. So, here I am having the Reynolds number. Now, if you remember this value was 30,000 when I have considered switching of the fluid, but because of the half uh, because of the parallel flow this value becomes half. Okay. Considering this we can consider considering this we can find out the pressure drop. So, that comes as 7 psi right. So, it appears that this alternative will meet all design requirement. However, we have to carry out sufficient calculation to find out H i and H naught further and mean temperature difference because all configurations are changing and we also have to see the effect of that on hairpin number. So, let us consider the another trial which I am saying as second trial because here I am calculating here I am revising all calculations for second time. Okay. So, here I am having benzene in annulus side and aniline in inner pipe. So, here I am having the temperature differences and because I am considering parallel flow I have to calculate F t factor also and that we can consider depending upon the branches. So, we can consider two branches over here. So, F t value we can obtain as 0.836. Considering this we can calculate H i value and H naught value like this. I am not going into detail of that because this we have already discussed in first trial. We can calculate the wall temperature and then the viscosity correction factor and then the revised H i and H naught value and so the dirt factor and so the overall heat transfer coefficient considering dirt factor right. And then we will further calculate the total length how much total length will be required. So, that comes out as 289 and this is corresponding to the previous calculation only. So, I am not going into detail of this. If you consider the hairpin that comes as 9. Okay. So, 9 hairpins are odd number. However, the equation for LMTD correction factor is based on assumption that both parallel branches are identical and therefore, we use two branches for five hairpins or two banks of five hairpins. So, total number of hairpins will be 10. Okay. So, considering this we can calculate the pressure drop for inner side. So, it comes as 11.9 PS, 11.9 PSI. And for reverse side or the return band we can consider pressure drop as 2.6. So, total pressure drop in inner pipe is 14.5 and similarly we can find out the pressure drop in annular side and that should be 11.6. So, both pressure drop are falling in a range. Now, finally, we have to find out that how much over design we are considering. So, that we have to calculate overall heat. So, that so for that we have to calculate area for clean condition and for dirt condition. Okay. So, you can calculate overall heat transfer coefficient at clean condition and area you can obtain as 107 feet square. Right. And uh, for 10 hairpin of 20 and for 10 hairpins of 32 length you can find out area as 139 feet square. Comparing these two will give the oversize 
as 10.6 percent. So, this much is the oversize we have considered all feasibility and uh, we met all design in a feasible limit. Okay. So, that is all about example 1 and that is all about this lecture. So, that is all for now. Thank you.